Hello guys, welcome back. We're going to be starting a new Let's Play series today on a game called Catacomb 3D The Descent. Uh, this is a really pretty old game, it's from 1991. It's by id Software, who are famous for the early, um, early first person shooter games basically. Uh, Wolfenstein 3D, Doom, that sort of thing. This game actually came before those, um, those earlier ones. Came out. This is literally one of the first first person shooters ever made. There are slightly older ones than this, but that this is one of the first ones that kind of really shows uh, a lot of the things that are common to modern first person shooters, like things like you know you can see the player's hand and stuff like that. So I'm gonna just go ahead and get started here. Um, this uh, the main menu. It might look kind of familiar if you've played any of Ed's kind of games from around about 1991. Um, it's got a similar kind of menu to things like Commander Keen and that kind of stuff. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and get straight in here. So we're going to play it at normal difficulty. I haven't played this in a very long time. Um, no. The music might sound familiar to anyone that's played uh, Commander Keen. Uh, th this song was featured in a few levels in Keen 4. Um, it does get pretty repetitive in this game because it is literally the only music in the entire game. But yeah, um, we'll roll with that for just now. So, as you can see, we can walk around. It looks The graphics are quite similar to Wolfenstein 3D, if anyone's ever played that. Um, the, there's pretty good reason for that. This game basically uses the same engine as Wolfenstein 3D, although it's a slightly earlier version. So we picked up a scroll there. Woe be to he that entereth my domain, Nemesis the Lich, Esquire. Okay, so basically the, the storyline behind this is we are going to try and rescue our friend uh, Grilminar or something like that from an evil lich called Nemesis who lives at the um, the innermost parts of this catacomb place. This. So, these guys, these are some of our first enemies we're meeting here. We can shoot them with our hand, we can shoot magic fireballs. Um, so you've got no ammunition or anything, you don't run out of fireballs at any point. Uh, but you can charge this up. As you can see, the, the nuclear explosion thing appears at the side there when you're charging it. And then you can take these guys out with one hit, which is pretty handy. You only really want to do that from a distance though, and there's a good reason for that, which I'll show you in a second. These guys, they can only hurt you if they get up close to you. But they can't hurt you while you are shooting them. These guys die in a couple of hits though, to be fair, so they're not really a huge problem, but there will be much tougher enemies later on in the game. Now you'll also see there, we opened that up by shooting the wall. That's a common thing in this game. There's secret walls that you can break open by shooting them. And you're... that, that becomes particularly important, you know, there's... You can only finish the game, basically, by going into some of these secret areas. So, we're going to be kind of methodically shooting all the walls as we go, just in case um, we don't want to miss any secrets or anything. Now, this is a portal. This marks the end of this level, let's call it. This, this game actually is kind of an interesting structure, because it's got a, a sort of hub level in it later on as well. Uh, which wasn't really common at the time at all. And it's, um, we didn't really see anything again like that until the likes of the Hexen, um, Strife, I think was a, a similar kind of thing, some Doom Engine games there. Um, but yeah, I mean, that, this, is, this is game's got a pretty early example of a hub level where you can basically, you, you, you'll see it later on in the playthrough, I won't go into that too much just now. Controls are pretty kind of basically like Wolfenstein 3D. You know, you can walk around, walk backwards and forwards. You turn with the left and right arrow keys. You can hold down Alt to strafe and move sideways. You're going to want to do that whenever you go around corners, really, because you don't want to. You turn very, very slowly in this game, so you don't really want to be spending lots of time lining yourself up to get around to shoot people. Um, you want to be facing them when you. Yeah, there we go. You want to be facing them, like, 
as you move into a room rather than having to adjust your positioning too much because it literally takes about five or six seconds to turn around, you know. There's treasure all over the place. Now these red things, red things are nukes, they're a kind of magic. And there's yellow ones as well, which are bolts. They are basically different ways of shooting. Um, they're used up once you can use them. They basically they shoot the same sort of way as the the fireball that you shoot out of your hand there. But the difference is that you know you, with the bolts you shoot and then like a whole stream of like fireballs comes out and with the nukes you shoot like a, a big circle blast around you. So it's useful like if if you're surrounded by enemies or something like that, you know, you want to use a nuke. I'm not gonna be using them much at the moment because you'll need them later on in the game, basically, you know. I'm saving those up, and the enemies around here are easy enough to take out, which is the tablet fireballs. The healing potions are the blue potions that we've been picking up as well. They, um, they aren't used immediately as you pick them up. You basically store them, and you press the H button to, to use one. So, we're going to be stockpiling those a lot as well. Um, they won't be hugely necessary this early in the game, but we will need quite a lot of them later on, probably, once the enemies start getting tougher. So, anyway, moving on to the next level here. Where does this take us? The ground floor. So, what do we have here? Enemies straight ahead of us. Okay. The graphics aren't particularly fantastic, but for 1991 standards, I mean, this was you know, technologically incredible, really. Um, to have textured walls and everything. Um, the, the, there was a game that id Software brought out slightly before this, which is called Hover Tank 3D, and it, it's very similar in terms of the gameplay, but the, the walls weren't textured or anything, so it's, the graphics weren't quite as good as in this. Um, I think this is one of the first examples of the, the sort of face in the, you know, if you look in the top right corner of the game screen there. Uh, oh, hello, you're big. Yeah, you can see the character's face there, and um, what that, what happens, you know, when you take damage, he starts to become more of a, a sort of skeleton, um, and that was that was used, you know, in the later Catacomb games as well, um, as well as things like you know Wolfenstein 3D, Doom, uh, you know, all, all those games had that kind of thing. I think. I'd, Quake, Quake have it as well. Quake might have had it. It's not something you really see nowadays in first-person shooters as they go for more sort of a, you know, immersive kind of trying to avoid using too much interface type things like that. But back in the early 90s, that was a pretty common thing to, to see. And it was really, this was one of the first examples of that, I think. So, you know, we're basically, we need to find a couple of keys in this level. Um, the blue key takes us to the end of the level. There's another door, there's a red door as well. Um, I'm not totally sure where the red key is, I can't remember if I'd ever found it before. Because I think, I think it was, must be hidden somewhere in this level, because I can remember not being able to open that door. Where's the blue key? I'm gonna check all these walls just in case there's a hidden passage somewhere. Um, so I kinda wanna see if I can find some of the stuff that I never managed to find when I was playing this before. I'm not gonna waste huge amounts of time looking for it if I can't find it. Yeah, it doesn't really look like I'm gonna find it. The music, uh, you might notice, is ultra repetitive. Um, 
Yeah, so I might, I might, I might switch the music off for the kind of future videos there. Um, here's something else. That, to be honest, that that seems to actually just go. Yeah, I don't, I don't think we really need to go in there at all. So let's just make our way through the blue door and the second floor. So I'm going to pause this here. Um, we are going to take a break uh, and I'll continue this in the next video. We'll move on to the second floor and see what awaits us in the next part. Um, so in the meantime, you know, if you uh, if you want to see more of this stuff, you know, subscribe, uh, give us a like and leave a comment. Let me know what you think. Um, and as always, take care, guys. I hope to see you again for the next part. See ya.